it's day six of my challenge. I'm trying to reach the rating of 2,000 in chess before the end of the year. And today my opponents are really kind. They are making four big mistakes, very typical mistakes. And I'll show you how to punish them. Let's go. E4. We are controlling the center and our meat is playing the 45. So we attack this pawn and they are not protecting the pawn but they are counter-attacking my own pawn this is called the petrov's defense and i will show you a very aggressive line to defeat this opening now this is already not part of my book usually you play d6 to attack this knight and then you're going to take this knight here would be a huge mistake to take this pawn because you can win a queen in four moves. I will show you after in the analysis. Now the queen is attacking this knight. I could move the knight backward, but I could also play the move d4 protecting it. I like the move d4. We are protecting the knight. Now we must move the knight backwards, I believe. And they will be able to take there. I think, okay. I am a bit confused because usually remember a rule. You don't want to go out with the queen too early. Now I will develop my piece and I will castle. This is going to be my next move. There is a pawn hanging here. I see. I could play the move c3 to just protect it. Maybe I could even sacrifice that pawn and play the move just castle. It's actually quite nice. Ah yeah, let's punish my opponent. Let's castle. We are saying, oh no, my pawn. This is why you don't have to take pawns and not, not develop your pieces. Now queen here. I'm looking at this king. I'm threatening a discovery check, which is going to be so powerful. Actually, not just this one. Not just this one. I'm also threatening this one or this one just to try to win the queen. This one, maybe not because the queen could go back covering. But this one is a huge threat. Now, okay, they are trying to run away. But this queen is still feeling not so happy here. Mm -hmm. I will play knight here. And now already I could win a piece if they castle. If they castle, I have a huge move which is bishop here. Huge, but uh, also small, because little step. I'm attacking this queen, and I'm also looking at this bishop that is no longer protected, and that's what we do. Now, the queen is under attack, and the bishop is hanging. This is why, one, don't go out with the queen too early, because the queen can be attacked by a piece of, of fewer value. Now, the bishop is attacking the queen, and then you are just wasting tempo, not castling your king. Uh, now, I think we can just take here. And that's very nice. It's very nice. Here it's important to notice also that I have a, such a great coordination of my pieces because the knight is protecting here. This is protected. Everything is well protected. Also, this square is well controlled. So there are no strange tactics. For example, I was looking at rook here. Then I have to take this pawn. And then is there any combination on my back rank? But there is nothing because this is well protected, the, the rook is also protecting here, the rook is protected by the king, and the rook cannot slide here because the knight is controlling, so no surprises. Because, for example, a nice tactic could have been, I take, sorry, a rook here, I take, and then sacrificing the queen, king takes, and then bishop here, the king moves, and then the rook is sliding here to give mate. But this is hope chess, because the knight is covering, after the check I could cover with the bishop or with the knight, or whatever so that doesn't work okay they just resigned i'll show you the tactic that doesn't work bing bong now sacrificing the queen would work if after this check this would be checkmate but that's absolutely nothing and in the opening this would be a terrible mistake because here white can win a queen really quickly we're attacking this knight let's say they protect it with the pawn we attack it with the pawn and now the knight seems like okay we have to leave the knight goes and now discovery check we move this knight we are giving a check with the queen and we are attacking the other queen if the queen tries to cover we still can take it with the knight and we win a, a queen that was quick it's time to get to 1400 okay e4 i love to play the move e5 this is one of the most played opening in chess in general now this is the bishop opening they're attacking this one middle point i'm going with the knight here also attacking a pawn now they protect it with the pawn, I go with the other knight. Usually, first you control the center, then you bring out your knights, and then you bring out the bishop. We are always attacking the f2 pawn. <sighs> you have to write down this. Do not push too many pawns in the opening. My opponent has done one, two, three, four pawn moves. That's a little bit too much. What am I doing now? I'm going for the center. I try to open up the center because I have well-developed pieces. My opponent didn't develop very well. 
Hoi boy. Okay. I mean, here we might have the Legos mate. <laughs> I mean, I might be able to take there. I mean, there is a free piece though. I can just take a free piece. What was this move? But maybe I will go with this. And if the queen is taken, I take here, this, and would be mate. The problem is that there is this extra square, so I shouldn't give up my queen. I'll take here. We win a piece in six moves. I think they might just resign. Okay, no, they keep going. They believe. I'm taking here. I'm threatening mate. <laughs> this is crazy. Should I trade the queens or not? I have a feeling and I, I don't want to trade the queens. Okay, I won't trade the queens. I go with the knight. Hee ha. Attacking the queen and attacking the spawn. Now, I don't take here intermezzo because it would be a mistake. You say like, oh, wait, before taking back, let's give this check. We're attacking also the rook. But no, because after king moves, the knight is under attack. And then we have to take back and then we lose the knight. So we take here and we're still threatening this. It's not so easy to cover. My opponent has to use the king. But now we take this pawn and we say, oh, yeah, we just want to trade a pawn. We are very innocent. We are not threatening anything else. Okay, actually, we are threatening the fork here. So they had to take with the king. And now we are just going to develop the bishop and then to go long castle. This is a very powerful long castle. Because by, by bringing our king to security, we are also activating the rook, directly looking at the king. Okay, now we take back with the rook, giving a check. This is going to, to last not long. Look at those bishops, so powerful. Okay, the king is trying to hide there. Actually, we don't have a mate, but hey, let's push the pawn. We really want to, to go for it. Now, we could use the pawn also to attack. Okay, we are taking there. And if they take with the rook, oh, what a pity, you have lost it. <laughs> because we are pinning the rook. The rook is falling, and we are not even going to take it immediately. We are going to play even the move f5. Really, really, really painful. Okay, no, now we take it. Because it's free. And we can give mate. <gasps> I see a very beautiful one. Or maybe not. <laughs> because they were running away. Okay, what to do? How to give mate? You know what? We play a very nice move. Rook here. This move is so powerful because the knight cannot move. The rook cannot move. If the knight moves, the rook is hanging. If the rook moves, the knight is hanging. So this is uh, really hopeless. We can just try to bring the other rook. Mm. <gasps> oh, that's nice. Check. That's beautiful. And now we have bim boom bum. Are you ready? The king has to go there. Come on, go there. No. Okay, maybe we still have it. Bing. Okay, I don't think we have it. We take first here and then we have it. Still, this cannot be moved. So we are really getting close now. Oh, they just resigned. It was mating five though. I just want to check that we didn't have mate. <gasps> we had a mating four by taking gear because after this. We just have a check, the king goes. Oh, and we play rook here and then we take there. Okay, nice, but it was not bim bum bum. Let's go, guys. One more game. We're playing against a chess maniac and ooh, I'm playing against 1d4. So I will show you one of my... I will not show you anything. Uh, because they didn't play c4, which is the queen's gambit, but I play knight here. So generally in every opening, you have to avoid that your opponent is going with the two pawns in the center of the board. Now, what they want to do with the knight here, they are supporting the square so the pawn can be pushed there. That's why we play the move d5 so that this pawn, uh, well, this move cannot be played. At least the pawn would be hanging. Now, they insist. They insist because they are saying, I'm going to take there and then I'm going to push for the center. So what we do, we protect here with the knight so that we counter insist. Because if they take, we take back and we are still controlling the square. This is why chess is usually a fight for the center from the very, a very early stage. And that's the proof of it. Now, if they really want to keep going for the center, what move can they play? The move f3. One thing to go with the move e4. This is typical of this opening, which is called Richt Richter Beresov attack. It's a very scary opening. White wants to go for the center with this move, then play queen d2 and going long castle. I've lost so many games when I was younger. And when I was young. <laughs> and now I, I've learned how to play against it. I know that I have to act really quickly and take the free pawns. <laughs> because I think this can just be taken, right? Well, maybe not with the knight. Or maybe yes. Maybe with the pawn. We'll take with the pawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is not protected and... Okay, so they want really to 
you know, to be very sharp in tactic. But that's a mistake because I understand that you're pinning this knight, but I can see that. You have always to ask, what is the idea of my opponent? They have an idea. But this idea can easily be stopped by winning a tempo. I'm now attacking the bishop with a pawn, so the bishop has to be moved, and then I can play one more move. So this was just a pawn lost for few. Where, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> Sorry if I'm weird. <laughs> okay, so I'm pinning this knight, but I'm also looking at this bishop that is now hanging. And also this bishop is feeling uncomfortable. Uh, it's a good square to develop the queen. Imagine I, I would have the glasses. I would like to watch this move better. I'm really confused by this move because it looks to me like another free juicy macaroni. I'm taking it. The knight is pinned. Actually, this helps me so much because now this knight that is protecting this bishop is pinned and attacked. I'm going to snap this knight next and then this bishop is hanging. This bishop is hanging. This position is going to collapse and we are just at move 7. I think in, in those games I won always a piece by move 10. <laughs> it's not easy to find a move for white. If white tries to go back with the bishop here, which seems to me one of the best moves, I can just take bishop takes and then I take this. If they move this bishop, I just take there and then the queen is attacking this other one. Okay, maybe a good try could be this one. Bishop here, knight takes and bishop here. Or queen there. Yeah, because if I play bishop there, I can simply take the queen, the bishop takes and maybe I can save the knight and I have an extra piece. Maybe. I don't think the knight can go back because the knight can take there and then doesn't have a square to go back. So the bishop could go there. This is a way to save the piece. Hope you can follow all, all this. But also after queen here, oh wait, maybe queen there also saves the piece because I can take and then the bishop is moved back. Now I cannot move my knight because the queen would be hanging and then the next move white is going to take there. So this also saves. My opponent has two ways, queen d2 and also bishop b3 probably. Those two moves are saving the piece. But I will still have two extra pawns. Eh? They are thinking since so long time. I hope they are still there. Oh, they have a message for me. <laughs> well, they have to move. If not, they cannot prove their point, you know? Time is running out. I can, I, I've learned that I cannot say time is few. I'm trying to implement it. And they, the game will auto-resign in 15, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, it was fun. I'm so proud of my calculation because the best move is exactly this. And after this, queen d2 is saving the piece. But still, it's minus 2 because I have two extra, uh, two extra pawns. What I have to do now is to develop my pieces. And it's not so easy because it seems like this move doesn't look so good. I mean, it's okay. can be played this and then I try to develop my bishop here. And I can try to castle. But apparently the best move here is to bring the knight there and then to try to play the move e5 you see it's so much such a difference this and then okay here there is already e3 that apparently is winning oh it's beautiful because i'm attacking this that's so such a cool move if the queen is taking the knight is saved is saved and if the pawn is taking this is hanging and if the bishop is taking i don't know <laughs> uh, there is knight here Attacking the queen, the queen has to move, and then I can save my knight. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, final game for today. And the question is, can my opponent last for more than 10 moves? <laughs> Sorry, Let, let's see. So I'm attacking simply a pawn, the knight is protecting, and now we go with the bishop here. Simple chess, Italian game. This is the anti-fried liver defense. This is an opening played by players that are scared of the fried liver they want to avoid knight here but they wasted the tempo because they are pushing a pawn i said already don't push the pawns too early in the opening they push the pawn a little bit too much and i'm taking back here i'm attacking the center immediately now i'm left with two pieces developed man another rule is that pawns are not going back push the pawns with a purpose in mind because now this pawn has left two very weak squares that will no longer be protected. I'm already thinking about this move, sacrificing the bishop. Now, I have to ask myself, do I really need to do that? 
Probably not, because after king takes, I give a check. Or maybe yes. <laughs> or maybe yes. Nah, I don't know. It looks interesting, you know? Check, king takes, I give a check, the king moves somewhere. Then I could give another, another check, the king moves up, right? And then I could go out with the knight, but then the knight goes there. Hmm. And no, I, I don't, I, th I think it's a little bit too early. No, guys, it's really too early. I try to make it work, but I don't sacrifice. I'm threatening Mato. I have to protect it, to protect it with the queen. And now I'm going to just develop a knight. I know that they are going to play knight here, attacking my queen. I will have to go backward here. Ah, uh, but I have a nice position because this bishop cannot be protect developed. So the king cannot be castled. And again, they are wasting time. They are really wasting time. I'm going to castle really quickly. Pushing pawns is a waste of time. They have to... I, I would have played something like maybe g6, bishop here and castle. This could have been a way to castle in these three moves. Or try to move the queen away from here and then move this bishop out. It's not so easy to move the queen away. Maybe queen here, bishop here, threatening mate and castle. Something, <gasps> something like this. I mean, this loses a piece at least, which is good. Because I can take... The bishop takes and then I give a fork. Okay, let's, let's, I'll show you. So I'm giving away the queen. Uh, by the way, we are at move 11. My opponent managed not to lose a piece at move 11, but at move 12. Now we have a fork and we are attacking two pieces at the same time. And now, bang, we pin the bishop. And then the next move, we are going to win it. Because now they have just one way to protect it. With the pawn. But now we attack it with the pawn. The bishop cannot be moved. And we are going to tag it at the next move. We're at move 14. We want a piece. That's nice. We take here. That's why you don't have to push pawns without a purpose. Learn how to play against the fried lever. It's quite simple. And don't be afraid of it. Develop your pieces is a valid tip in every, basically in every chess position. Now they're attacking a bishop, so we don't want to let it go. We're attacking a rook. Traits are good when you have... When you have advantage, material advantage, and that's one of the case. That's the case. We are attacking this pawn. Also, there is a fork here. Let's not forget that my opponent has two pawns, one and two, for the piece. So it's still not so simple. Not so simple. We can play bishop here, attacking the rook, and now attention, attention, where they go. We are attacking this pawn, right? By discovery, it was a discovery attack. Now we. Ooh! I told you, attention. Now this is a fork, and this could be a very good reason to resign. One, one rook is going to be lost. And here is important. Always, you take the rook on the side of the board. Because like this, it seems like that rook is not active, but like this, you force the other rook to get to a bad position. Now we could just take this pawn, and we do this. It's true that this one is also hanging, but doesn't matter. We are going to activate the other rook. Here, how to win, you trade the rooks, you go with the king, you, you, okay, we trade the rooks, perfect, and then you will bring the king, and we are going to take some pawns, and we are going to promote one and win the game. This is how you win, because with just a rook, it's not so easy. I mean, we could also try to capture, actually, this pawn, and then try to give mate, but you all still need the king. You don't win just without the king. So, in the end game, remember, the king is... A very important piece and needs to be used. Now there was a pawn hanging, so we just pushed. And then we have to bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. It's going to be, you know, it's going to take quite some time. We are going to attack this pawn. If we can win a pawn, we are happy to do so. So we take there and we take back with, with the bishop. Anyway, even if we attack this pawn with the, with the rook, the bishop is protected. Okay, now we go here with the bishop. And uh, there is a problem is that it's not so simple to take the spawn because it's protected. But here in this position, we can even sacrifice the rook. We can just go there, bring the king, go there, sacrifice the rook and then push the spawn. And it's something that you do. It's very typical. You just sacrifice material. Here we have even better. I just pushed the spawn. Now my opponent has empassant, but hey, they are not protecting the bishop like that. So now I will just push and push, let the pawn go. The pawn is rolling, rolling, and uh, that's going to be really nice. Yeah, GG's.
This game shows that you don't have to be scared of the fried liver. Playing the move h6 here is a waste of time. You play the move knight here and you let your opponent play the fried liver. Let's flip the board. Now the knight and the bishop are attacking this pawn and there is just one move to protect it. d5. You have to know this move. Now they take this pawn and you have to be careful one more time. You don't take back here. Because now white has a brilliant knight sacrifice. And after king take, the queen is sliding here, attacking the king, giving a check, attacking the knight. And here, black is in big trouble. So after d5, pawn takes, you have to remember one last move. And it is to move this knight here. We are attacking the bishop. And we are going to take this pawn back at some point. We are a pawn down for now, but we are going to take that pawn back. The bishop is usually giving a check. This is the main move. If the bishop just goes back here, you can take it. Pawn takes, and then you can take back this, this pawn. For example, knight here. You're attacking this knight. You're going to develop the bishop out, the other bishop out. Castle, you're going to be fine. After bishop b5, remember to cover with the bishop. I think this is the easiest approach. If you can play two more moves, you're going to play this castle and then take the spawn okay three more moves if you want to see how to keep playing this position i will link here a video with all the explanation that's all for today guys if you enjoyed this video remember to like and subscribe and see you tomorrow for day seven that's all for today ciao